So our project for Senior Design 2 was rocket telemetry. Uh, our goal was to construct a high frequency communication device to track and return predetermined metrics from a rocket's flight for under $650 by April 15th, 2024. Uh, the team members were Justin Wolf, Michael Morris, Austin Lane, Michael Donahue, and Bobby Dickey. So the objective of this project was to launch a rocket and track it using a ground station as it flies. And as we're tracking it, we'll also be wirelessly receiving live telemetry from the rocket. Uh, the motivation behind this was that the project would be a more unique and challenging take on tracking technology that would apply for more higher speed targets. It also has real world applications for examples such as sounding rocket experience, and it removes the need for data recovery post-flight. The main goals for the project goals and deliverables were to successfully launch and safely land a rocket, track the rocket as it launched and on its descent, and control antenna motion to follow the rocket while it was moving. For the project implementation, we implemented it into two devices, the first of which being the payload. So the payload is secured into the upper section of the rocket, and it is equipped with all of our sensors and modules that gather the flight data, and then it transmits it to the second device, which is the base station. On the right half here, you can see the base station. Uh, the base station simply displayed the data and collected it, as well as had the antenna that moved to track the movement of the rocket. So these diagrams lay out the hardware that was inside the payload in the base station on the top and bottom, respectively. On the left side of each diagram, you can see simple um, signal block diagrams. And then on the right side is more a more defined uh, wiring guide. Um, of note, the GPS and XB modules for both the payload and the base station are connected to the Raspberry Pis through UART connections. Uh, for the payload, the three-in-one sensor that contains the accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer, and the barometer um, separately are connected to the Raspberry Pi through an I-squared C-lines. And on the base station, um, the servo motors are connected through pulse-width modulated signals. So when we were creating this project, we laid out some specific metrics to, to gather. Those are specifically GPS coordinates, altitude, acceleration, and orientation. When we were going through the hardware selection process, we wanted to make sure that these sensors were robust enough to survive um, the forces of a, a rocket launch and were reusable for future launches. Um, and we also wanted to display this data on the base station in real time. So we implemented an LCD screen for that. Finally, we wanted to orient the antenna towards the rocket throughout the entire flight, and thus the introduction of servo motors into the base station. So here's the payload and that went into the top part of the rocket. Uh, on this side, you can see uh, in that image, the green board is the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Um, on the right side, those two little black boards, the top one is the barometer, and the bottom one is the three-in-one sensor, the accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope. And the red board on the bottom is the XB RF module. Uh, on the very top, you can see the GPS module pointed upwards, as that gave the antenna on that, that little orangish tan box a better chance of connecting to satellites. And on the back side, um, there's a lithium ion battery, the big silver block. That's connected to a USB C charging module in the top right. And this is all wired through a button on the left side. This essentially can turn the, the payload on and off and switch it into charging mode. Here you can see the base station uh, consisted of two main components, one being the uh, antenna and the other being the screen housing. The screen housing obviously supports and displays the screen, but also houses the XB transceiver you see on the left that connects the antenna and receives packets from the payload. And on the right, you can see the GPS chip that got its position in relation to the rocket. Um, under those chips inside the housing is the Raspberry Pi 5, which is the entire brains of the operation. Um, it, processes the packets received from the payload, as well as displays them on the screen. The other component you see is the antenna. Um, it is controlled by two servo motors that allows it not only to rotate, but also tilt in order to keep it facing the rocket at all times. So the rocket was designed with the explicit purpose of integrating custom design payload bays. Using uh, flight simulation software, specifically Open Rocket, we were able to create a simulation of the distribution of weights, the shapes of the rockets, 
and this allowed us to predict the flight path of the rocket as well as other aspects such as stability which is essentially how susceptible to turning in the wind the rocket will be in the diagram at the bottom you can see a cutaway of the rocket made using flight simulation with the black rectangle on the left side being marked as where the payload was attached to the rocket for the software design, we had a user interface and also the data being able to be sent and received. So for the user interface, we were trying to see real data coming from the rocket and having that display on a 3D graph and also on the side with live data. This data was checked um, from the Raspberry Pi on the rocket to verify that all the data was the same between what was seen on the two Raspberry Pis. And then the GUI was also able to replay different flight flight paths that we had from saved data from flights that we had already run. This was useful when we wanted to look back at the data that we've already gained or also at the flight, uh, the actual test flights that we ran at the end for our final demo. And then for the data sending and receiving, uh, the data sent from the board that's on the payload while it's in flight using the XP device that had been mentioned before. It's received by the board that is on the base station. And um, again, this data was compared between the two to make sure it was all right. For the communication design, the payload is sends the base station using the two XP devices. So the line of sight range on that was about 26 to 28 miles, according to the XP website. Uh, what we found when we were testing was that we could get a little bit over half a mile, even when we didn't have line of sight. And the frequency range that the XP devices used was the 900 megahertz band. Um, so the data was sent in packets between the two XP devices, um, being 40 bytes of data sent from the sensors that was on the payload to the base station. And the packet included an index that we could keep track of where we were and make sure that we had no overlap in the packets. And then for the GUI, uh, the GUI had a graph that displayed the data that was received, and then it also had additional side uh, displays for other data, including the acceleration and roll of the magnetometer. And this GUI would save the data to a file um, after the flight had run, and we made sure to include code that would, uh, if it failed, it would make sure to save the data before it closed out of the program so that we would still get that data. Um, and then the last little function that we had was to show data from previous flights so it could easily be graphed after we had already run the testing. And then for our methodology for the software, the Pi simple GUI library was used for creating the user interface. And so the graph updates after 10 packets uh, being received by the base station so that it decreases how often the graph changes, uh, which helped the GUI to run better and more frames per second. And then we used the Adafruit Python libraries to configure and pull measurements from the sensors that were on board the payload. So the GPS tracking utilizes the coordinates from both the payload and the ground station to calculate the horizontal distance and direction between the rocket and the base station. Specifically for the distance, the Haverstein formula was used, which is a specific trigonometry formula that calculates distance on the surface of a sphere. For the flight simulations, we used OpenRocket, and this was used to create a model of the rocket within it, and we were able to use it to create flight paths for the rocket. Uh, this included pretty much every aspect of both the rock's design and the conditions on the launch site. Okay, so for our results, the rocket was able to fly at a peak altitude of 373 feet and safely descend. The ground station was able to track um, and follow the rocket with the antenna at a rate of two hertz. And we did, as mentioned earlier, implement a loop that allowed the base station to continue tracking if there was a disconnect with any of the sensors. Here is a short video of the flight. I did. And here you can see the flight graph. The kind of breaks you see are due to an autoscaling function with the accelerometer. Uh, 
Um, every time it adjusts, it kind of causes that little jump, but you can still see we were able to get a fairly continuous and smooth uh, flight graph. So over the course of the project, we did face a few challenges and bottlenecks. The biggest one of those would be the shipping delay for components. I believe it was about a week and a half or two weeks that we were unable to make any progress as we were just waiting on components to arrive. Then another one would be the lack of flight testing with the rocket prior to our final launch. Uh, and that was due to the hobbyist group continuously canceling on us. We were originally supposed to test uh, the rocket with none of our equipment in it and get a good idea of how it would perform, but we were unable to do that. And then the GPS module had, on the base station in particular was not very precise. It was off between 20 to 40 feet in some cases and had a very slow update rate. And then the XB chips that we had were difficult to configure uh, using the provided software, but we were able to get that working. For future directions, uh, using higher power motors would allow us to get higher uh, and better flights. However, these would need permits to be able to legally purchase them. Uh, another thing that cut into our flight height was our launch rail. Had a little bit more movement than it should have during our launches, which caused the rocket to get caught on the launch rail a little bit more than it should have. And for the GPS modules, they could have been better, particularly on that base station to increase the refresh rate and accuracy. But to conclude, the rocket successfully did launch and land safely. The payload was able to measure the desired telemetry data as well as transmit it back to the base station. And the base station was able to track the rocket during its entire flight and display live data on its screen. And here are references. Uh, we would like to extend a thanks to the Clemson ECE department as well as Dr. Raza personally for their support throughout the semester and everything they do.